Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to St. Timothy Lutheran Church in Tarpon Springs, Florida. And just thank you, thank you, thank you to our St. Timothy family for continuing to be there for one another and for checking in on each other during these difficult times. It's truly been great to hear the stories of how folks are holding each other up. We have truly been blessed by the Spirit with strong bonds and relationships within our congregation. Please continue to check in with one another. And if you hear of anyone who does not have a computer or a way to listen to the worship services or receive our weekly updates, please let us know. We can create and deliver CDs of our worship services as well as email copies of our newsletter to anyone who would like them. Our St. Timothy midweek meditative worship service of scripture and prayer based on Lectio Divina will continue while we are not able to worship together in person. This contemplative worship will be posted on our website as well as on Facebook every Thursday. Set aside time each week to sit and be present with God in this reflective way. Our weekly Saturday and Sunday worship will be posted each week on Saturday. If you would like to follow along with the service, we will also be posting a video PowerPoint presentation of the liturgy, song lyrics, etc., along with the audio so people can follow along with the service as they listen. The link will be sent out weekly as well as will be posted on St. Timothy's Facebook page. Thank you, Catherine Bandy, for creating these videos for us. Please continue to send your prayer requests to the office so they can be shared in worship and added to our prayer list. Each week we are offering Bible studies online via Zoom. They are Tuesdays at 1 p.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. If you're interested in participating, please contact Mary Dellison at 727-937-3503, extension 105, or discipleship at mylutheran.com. For information and the meeting number, you can connect via computer, smartphone, or landline phone. No experience necessary. Both cross trainers, that's middle through high school, and kick elementary age youth groups are continuing to meet online via Zoom. Watch your email for youth group times and Zoom meeting numbers. Please contact Mary Dellison if you have any questions. To continue our weekly offering, you may mail your envelope to the church, use Give Plus, our online giving link, which is on the front page of our website, or download the Give Plus app on your phone. And you can use bill pay through your own bank. You can also drop your offering off at the church office. Please call first before coming as office hours have changed. And so now, let us join our hearts together and worship wherever you are as we continue our worship through our prelude, What a Wonderful Name.
Jesus. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed! Alleluia! Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with Him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us join our hearts together in the prayer of the day. Almighty and eternal God, the strength, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you 
and receive, receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one, one God, God, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with the proclamation of God's word. The first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We will sing responsibly Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is, is in the godly that, that are in the land, upon those who are noble, among the people. But those who run after My portion and my cup it is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave. Or let your holy one see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection <clears throat> of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is in, 
imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that through perishable <clears throat> is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Here ends the reading. Uh, thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, o Lord. Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. Amen. With today's scripture, I imagine God finding Adam and Eve hiding behind bushes ashamed. Or the disciples are found behind closed doors for fear, perplexed by what's going on. And we're right there with them behind our doors, paralyzed by COVID-19, economic decline, wondering what's ahead for all of us. Are we living our lives as though we are fearfully plummeting to our end? When we look around, is that what we see? Still today, God finds us in our hiding with this truth. Christ is risen. Thanks be to God that no matter the wrenching chaos of the world, and no matter where or how or even if we can gather, the day of resurrection happens. Life flourishes in the face of death, and we are offered resurrection hope today. May we hear again today that Jesus came to save and not condemn, that Christ overcame death with life, and he is risen. So if we believe that, wouldn't we live out of this life-giving news whether things are going to end or not? Because in Christ, they'll never end, according to his news that he's given to us. After all, when Christ comes back in all his glory, is it the end or is it the beginning? Are we afraid to live for fear of death, loss, and rejection? Or we, do we join in that song? That with our lives we truly say, Christ has triumphed, he is living, hallelujah. Throughout history and even today, people are being persecuted and killed for faith in Christ's resurrection. And for so long, we've been anesthetized in this culture in our comfort, complacent, and apathetic. But our current circumstances are a wake-up call what is it that you believe in again, the circumstances ask us? I heard someone talking to someone from Tanzania, and they said of us in America, you Americans, you Christians are afraid. No, we're not. Yes, you are. You're afraid to boldly proclaim Christ in your living. You're afraid of what others will think and say, afraid of losing your earthly comforts, Afraid of being unpopular, offensive, or irrelevant. You live as though death and not the resurrection is the final word from God. In this time of change, his words raise the question of us. Have we become a complacent people, compromised in the pursuit of earthly power and perishable wealth? Are we afraid to live out our convictions in Christ? Are we more concerned with popularity than integrity? Maybe in many ways we join those disciples in the upper room locked behind doors for fear of what the world will think of us, let alone do to us. Today the disciples are confused, frenzied, and afraid. Afraid that maybe they had been abandoned by God. That they would die too from the world's violence that killed Jesus. Or if he is alive, that Jesus would reject them because they had failed and not stuck with him. We can feel that way too. We often struggle with convictions that we could have responded more faithfully, that we have denied Jesus in the world and let him down and failed. We too have doubts. Did you ever notice that what Thomas asked for was exactly what the other disciples got, what Mary got to hear and see in the garden? When Jesus appeared to the other disciples, he showed them his hands and his side. And only then did the disciples rejoice because they saw the Lord. So doubting Thomas, the word actually comes from the Greek epistos. It isn't doubt as much as it is unbelieving. To believe in Jesus is not as much about reciting proper doctrine or something that is strong one day and wavering the next. To believe in Jesus is the same thing as saying, I abide in you and you abide in me, like a little toddler with a loving parent acting, living, and trusting in this relationship without understanding it all. In John 1, 12, it says this, To all who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God. Believing Jesus is God is a living confession of relationship. 
When Thomas says, my Lord and my God, it is a claim about relationship. What do I do if I believe I'm a husband, if I believe I'm a dad, if I believe I'm a pastor, if I believe I'm a son? Well, I know and I believe and I live in and I show up for the calling of that relationship in a way that others can touch and feel and experience. And then they come to know me as husband and dad and pastor. In fear of abandonment and hurt or rejection, we probe love, testing if it's for real, if it's true, if we can really trust it. Jesus, confident of God's love, says, go ahead, poke your questions into my wounded life, which is a, a confession of what we don't understand, what we struggle with. Sometimes we get the notion that the more faith, if we just have more faith, then we'll have fewer questions that we'll ask. But faith, after all, isn't knowledge. But instead, it's the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. It's practiced. It's lived in through all the mistakes that will happen along the way. Jesus says, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. Jesus talks beyond the disciples and speaks hope to us. And John it mentions this as well. I wrote these that you might believe and in believing have life in my name. For as we hear in the scriptures, the just shall live by faith. Believing is to be active and alive in relationship with God. Ask your questions. Dad wants to be a part of your growing. As a dad, I can tell you that I delight when my sons ask questions, whether they're young or teenagers or older. It always delights me to be in that relationship, to watch them grow, to be a part of it, to grow myself as part of it. Sharing doubt is a sign of an honest, intimate relationship. The tugging at the pants. Daddy, 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 why? Is honest. It's human. It's real. And real and honest is a necessity for healthy relationships. Thomas has honest questions that only God can answer. Once he experiences Jesus, his faith is as real as his doubts ever were. Thomas was honest. He was human. He was real. He doesn't just want a story. He wants to experience Jesus. This is what unbelieving seekers are looking for in church. Are we for real, honest, human? Are we proclaiming his truth, calling people back to God for the forgiveness of sins? Because they too want to know if Jesus is for real. Hopefully we will be a church that welcomes questions and seekers and enters into dialogue. The world around us doesn't just want a story among many. They want to experience Jesus if he's real. And how will they touch and see and know if not through his followers in their believing? Like the woman at the well, or, or the blind man, or Lazarus. On our own, we can only do what the disciples did. In repentance and obedience, share our believing lives with others. Always remember, it is God who does the work. And God is faithful to his promises always Knowing that God responds to our fears, doubts, and failures by coming through our locked doors and freely giving us peace and purpose. Notice, Jesus graciously comes back just for Thomas because he will not lose a single one of those whom the Father gave him, as we hear in John 18, 9. God will also show up for us who are infected, unemployed, grieving or lonely for we hear today that our God overcomes every barrier wall fear doubt to get to his disciples in the resurrection God comes giving benediction or blessing he announces peace be with you that is shalom that's wholeness of oneness with God you have been reconciled you have been restored to God so be at peace. All is forgiven and mended in an unbreakable fashion. What amazing, undeserved grace this is that God has done for us. So let your heart be at peace. So Jesus, all too aware of our frail weakness, gives us a gift. The one he promised us in John 14, the Holy Spirit, the advocate, the parakletos, the one called alongside us who would be with us forever. 
the spirit of truth which will teach us and remind us of all that Jesus has said and guide us into all the truth. To all those hidden behind bushes and doors, the spirit comes in an act of new creation. Just as God breathed the breath of life into Adam and Eve and all creation, including you and I, now Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit upon them as a pure gift, like baptism. Jesus empowers those he calls. In 1 Peter, he says to us, in essence, all y'all have been swept up in the new creation. 1 Peter tells those undergoing immense suffering in their day, and maybe you can identify, by his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God. It's like a coach encouraging their team, hang in there, don't quit. Or a husband saying to his wife in labor, breathe, new life is here. Know that you are a kept woman or a kept man, even amidst the sufferings. So what does it mean to be a person of living hope? What does it look like to be a people confident in an unperishable inheritance? And maybe it looks like Abraham wandering in faith and hope toward an inheritance promised by God. Maybe it looks like the Hebrews journeying in the desert on their way to the promised land. And maybe it looks like exiles in Babylon hoping for a day when they could return to Zion. Maybe it looks like us journeying through this time with a living hope taking the next step and believing toward the new Jerusalem that's already begun in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus showed them the wounds that come from loving a sinful world. Do not be afraid. God's life is stronger than the things that wound us. Showing that God will transform our suffering to his glory. God's grace wasn't so that you could live for yourself but for something much more, God's glory. So Jesus commissions the disciples, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. In an instant, they're changed from disciples, that is, learners, through all of their times of failures and mistakes and growth, to apostles, apostolos, those who are sent. The Latin for sent is missio or mission. The resurrection empowers us in our mission with a reminder to us Forgiveness is essential in our mission. Jesus is further specifying what it means to be sent, to make known the love of God that Jesus made known to us. It is a communal witness. As people come to know and abide in Jesus, they will be released from their sins. They'll come to believe it by being a part of it, like knowing that your mother loves you by bringing in her arms again and again and again, no matter how many mistakes that you've made. If, however, those sent by Jesus fail to bear witness, we get caught up in greed and quarreling and judging and self-preservation. People will remain stuck in their unbelief. Their sins will be retained or held on to because they haven't experienced that love. So may the Holy Spirit lead us today to live believing that you are forgiven and then to forgive, to live believing the resurrection is the final word ahead of us. To season the world with living hope. To flavor it with the taste of the kingdom that's coming. Rest in the promise that Jesus comes through our locked doors and breathes peace into our anxious lives. He keeps sending us out into a hostile world that so desperately needs his gifts of life and peace. Come, Lord Jesus, into our fear Blow the Holy Spirit on us and make us a church of living hope, reaching out to touch the wounds of the world in your name, confident in your coming kingdom. And may the peace of God, which passes all of our understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let's join our hearts and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit 
and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Open the doors we close. O oh God, when we fear those who worship you in different ways, guide us to unity and harmony so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open the paths we ignore, O oh God. When we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth, inspire all to care for the world you have made so that living things might thrive. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Hear. prayer. Open the rooms we lock, O oh God, to those who live without a homeland or place of safety. We pray that generous nations offer refuge and a peace for all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open the hearts we close, O God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those isolated physically or emotionally through incarceration, addiction, mental illness, chronic suffering, grief, or this time we find ourselves in at stay at home and all who are in need. We especially pray for those on our prayer list, those in the deep sanctuary of our hearts this morning. For Hal Cook and Buck Snare, Karen Bowman, Joan Flathman, Ed Holater, for Kendra Spearman, for Sal and Bill Devardi, for Margaret Z, for Ken Grunke, for Joanne Butcher, for Edward and Eva and all healthcare professionals, first responders, essential workers, those living alone, all who grieve, caregivers, the unemployed, the job insecure, the food insecure, students and teachers, scientists and leaders. Lord, we place them all into your care, knowing that you are faithful. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Open the ways of love of God in the pursuit of peace throughout the world and bless the efforts of missionaries, healthcare professionals, activists for women and children, and relief workers especially those who find themselves in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Open the way to eternal life, O God, as we remember those who have died in the faith, especially Olavas Petri and Laurentias Petri, renewers of the church. Free us from fear of death, that we may embrace the peace you have promised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. Our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together as our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive, forgive us our, our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. And Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Run faithful winner to the graveside. 
Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.